First up this morning, she is an Oscar winning costume designer with more than 50 films and television shows under her very fashionable belt. Black Panther, Do the Right Thing, Amistad, Selma, these are just a few of the credits to her name. And right now, you can see her groundbreaking costumes up close in a new exhibit at the Museum of Pop Culture. Welcome to New Day, Ruth Carter. Hi. We are so happy. To, it's an honor to have you. I mean, I'm a little starstruck right now because <laughs> your Hollywood resume is so extensive and so wonderful. I mean, I just named a few, and that was just in the 90s, I think. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, you have had so many wonderful experiences. But do you have a favorite movie? I have to ask you right off the top. Oh, they're all, they're like my children. You know, I can't really say. There's a different time for a different movie, and you have a favorite in the 90s, and you have a favorite coming in. So I would say, like, maybe Black Panther was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and I will think back, Malcolm X might have been a favorite, or Tina Turner would have a favorite. Yeah. It's all a different experience. That's what's uh, so fascinating about costume design. Yeah. And can I just ask you a question? What's Love Got to Do With It, the Tina Turner story, yeah. is actually one of my favorite movies. Wow. You had to cover several decades of fashion. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Well, the fashion Tina Turner took care of herself. So once I started looking into, you know, some of her old photos, I had access to her photo albums and things, wow. I saw that she was really a fashion maven. Yes. Um, so it was the story of her life that I had to learn and research and understand, you know, her arc. We all have an arc. Yeah. yeah, so that was really eye-opening and also, uh, you know, very heartwarming because she pulled herself up from her bootstraps mm -hmm. and she really made herself uh, this big, bigger-than-life character. Amazing. Yeah. I love how you use the, the clothing to tell that story. Mm -hmm. how, how did you get into costuming? Well, you know, I met Spike Lee uh, after moving to California, Los Angeles. Uh, he came to see a dance performance and then months later called me uh, early in the morning one one morning and said this is the man of your dreams and I was like Denzel <laughs> so he's no this is Spike you know and I want you to do my first studio film School Days so School oh, Days wow. was his first studio film but also my first movie uh, ever. Oh my gosh, that had yeah. to be an incredible, scary, but fun experience. Yeah, it was fun. I did theater before then, so I kind of knew the road, you yeah. know? Yeah. You mentioned a little bit before when we were talking about uh, Tina Turner movie, but what, what goes into the process? How much, what kind of research do you do usually? Oh, it's uh, it varies depending on the project. Uh, with Tina Turner, I had all of her performances, mm -hmm. you know, on VHS, yes. you know? <laughs> I had them all, and I was screen grabbing yeah. and uh, really getting all of the stage performance costumes exactly the way they were when she wore them mm -hmm. and then one day she showed up on set like out of the blue and I shared with her the photos of everything and and we had a really wonderful exchange about her life and oh, wow. and the choices that she made so sometimes it's the actual person and then other times it's research you know like with Black Panther mm -hmm. we looked at all the tribes around Africa and we were influenced by them and so it's all different for each movie that's incredible Tell Tell me more about Black Panther, kind of what, what went into creating that overall look. I mean, that one scene where everyone comes together, it's amazing. The Warrior Falls. Yeah. <laughs> so amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just a step-by-step -step process. Uh, Ryan Coogler, the director, gives you a lot of guidance. You you are an artist yourself, so you bring a lot to the table. We studied the tribes, and we were inspired by different uh, tribes of Africa. But then we also had to infuse modern technology right. to uh, create a modern society and so we use 3d printing and all kinds of new technologies that were new to costuming yeah you know 3d printing has been around but not in the costume area so that was what made it exciting I that's amazing to me. That is so cool. What, really quickly, what kind of things do you create with, with the 3D printing? Oh, wow. Well, we created Ra Queen Ramonda's crown. It was 3D printed. It's called the Nishikolo. And her shoulder mantle was created in a box, you know, oh 3D goodness. printed. Yeah, uh, the Black Panther buckle that the Dora Milaje wears, mm -hmm. 3D mm -hmm. printed. That is so yeah. fascinating. And then we had to go to Europe to have it done. Now, uh, in my office, you can have the 3D printer right there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. On the topic of Black Panther, um, how did you learn to create Afrofuturism? 
Well, you know, it's all about infusing modern technology and not keeping people in the past, mm -hmm. just honoring the past, honoring culture, and then moving it into the future yeah. and using technology and 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 what you can envision uh, for for a inclusive future. Some of your most famous costumes are on display at Mopop. What do you hope visitors feel as they experience your work? I just hope that they see that the experience goes beyond the silver screen. It does land in a career where, you know, if you have children that really want to be artists or want to be creators, here's an example of someone who had a small beginning and wanted to be an artist, wanted to be a designer, and, and received the Oscar. So yeah. you can go on that journey with your family and it's really it's really immersive I love it tell us about the exhibit what can we see oh there's roots there's Amistad there's the shaft coat that's, oh, yes. <laughs> there's Oprah's costume from the butler there's uh, there are zoot suits. If you never saw a zoot suit in real life, you can go to the museum and see the zoot suits from Malcolm X. There's uh, Coming to America. Eddie Murphy's costumes are there. It's, it is really a full view of the, from the little sewing machine I had when I was a kid, mm -hmm. all the way to my Oscar dress. I lo oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. You designed yourself. Uh, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> um, I only have a little time left, but I just wanted to ask you. Know, I had, a, I've always had a secret dream. I would have loved to be a costume designer. Oh, what? I love it. I never learned to sew, though. So. You don't have to sew. That's what people don't know. Really? You just have to have big ideas. <sighs> I love it. See? I think it's so fantastic. Any advice to someone who is looking to maybe share their dream? Yes, just realize that it's not a profession where you have to do all the jobs. Yeah. You can just do one of them, you know, whether you like to draw, whether you like to sew, or just create idea, mood boards, that will make you a costume designer. Thank you so much. It has been inspiring talking to you. I am so excited. Cannot wait to go see the exhibit. And you can see the Ruth E. Carter Afrofuturism in Costume Design right now at Mopop. The exhibition is included with the price of a general admission ticket, which is really awesome.